he's been stabbed! exclaimed the maid. Yes, the knife in his chest does suggest that, said the detective. We have already checked for prints and we've got nothing. Even inside that rubber glove holding the knife, we need to look further than the murder weapon. We need to look for motivation. Hey, I'm home. Ah, what's this? Some sort of typing test? I know typing is a very important skill for uh, a clerk. Um, but I don't really understand why a woman would want a job anyway. You know, you're home all day, plenty of time to relax, do what you like. <laughs> Not to sound too jealous. Uh, anyway, I want to ask, would you be able to hurry up with my dinner? I'm starving. Right. Of course. It's obviously the maid that did it pointed out the young, blonde, attractive woman who had been sitting on the ottoman in the corner of the room the whole time. She was madly in love with him, and there's literally a rubber glove holding the murder weapon. She continued with a grin. The maid looked shocked. No, I would never! She exclaimed defensively. And sorry, who are you, miss? Asked the detective to the blonde. Oh, I'm... just the piano teacher, she replied. What were you doing in Mr. Black's mansion at 10.02pm on a Saturday night? The detective inquired suspiciously. Dear, I understand that you enjoy your typing and everything, but I'm home now, and you have other responsibilities. I'll ask you one more time. Could you please start making dinner? You know, if you were a good wife, you would have been ready from the moment that I entered. Mm. No, I'm sorry, I don't mean to insinuate that you're not a good wife. You are. I had um, a work do in my study the other day with some work friends. Uh, would you all clean that up after dinner? I've got my piano recital uh, with Scarlett tonight. I was... teaching? Mr. Black is... was a very eager student, the teacher answered. Eager to play some keys he was, said the colonel sarcastically. You're just jealous, the teacher remarked to the colonel. You wish, the colonel replied. Is that why you killed him? The teacher continued. Oh, stop it, said the butler who had been listening from the stairs. And you're the butler, I suppose, the detective figured. Huh, don't mind me, the butler shyly stated. Honey, the problem with the toilet's happening again. The floor is covered in water. Would you be able to finish off with that thing and go and clean it up? You haven't even started making dinner yet and it's approaching 6.30. You work in the house all week like the maid, correct, mister? The detective asked the butler. Correct, replied the butler. So why was the colonel here, Hunter, the detective? The butler looked into the air, seemingly trying to remember something. I'm not sure, he arrived shortly after the teacher. I believe they are engaged. And you just wanted Mr. Black dead because he just put you in his will, butler, exclaimed the teacher suddenly. Interesting. So let me shortly summarize. The maid and butler work in the house all week. The maid is in love with Mr. Black and the butler wants his money. The colonel is engaged to the teacher who he believes to be having an affair with Mr. Black, said the detective. Honey? Honey? Honey, I'm gonna have to be a bit strict with you now, okay? You can't go around buying any kitchen gadget that takes your fancy. We already have many knives, and I can see you already have a set of gloves, so I don't understand why you need another pair. Now, dinner! They were, said a gentle voice entering the room. A slim, pretty brunette wearing only one rubber glove elegantly positioned herself in front of the fireplace. But eventually, everything changes. I guess we'll never know if it was reason enough for the poor colonel to murder the man. While speaking, she slowly took off the glove and threw it in the fireplace. The rubber glove, exclaimed the maid. The end. Honey, dinner!